Hi, everybody, and welcome. As I say, hello, Captain Howdy Six arrives. Hi, Captain Howdy. Welcome to Muckleteal, Washington. Rap 43 from Phoenix is here. Really nice to have you here. We've got blossoms on the tree once again. Or I should say trees here at the Pioneer Cemetery in Muckleteal, Washington, about 30 miles north of Seattle. Nice to have the blossoms back. Daylight saving time approaching this Sunday. We'll be moving our clocks ahead one hour Sunday evening. So we'll have sunsets beginning during the 7 o'clock hour. Karen America, nice to have you here. And out there in the distance, beyond the cherry blossoms, across the waters of Puget Sound is Whidbey Island. And yay, as Tom says, Whidbey Tom is out there on the island, I presume. That's where he lives. Nice to have you here, Tom. And it's nice to have some light past 6 o'clock on this day. The tide is out. Can't quite quote Blondie by saying that it's high. Because look at all that shoreline that's, ex that's exposed just below the railroad tracks. You can almost see coronavirus in the air. Oh my goodness. You are most welcome. I'm happy to share it. Baby girl 73 and Deb. Deb is here. Hi, Deb. I hope you're doing well, Deb. This is a familiar patch of ground. Oh, yeah, I think, I guess I've seen some ducks out there on the water. I thought I saw maybe the head of a seal or a sea lion, but it's not to be. What I was about to point out, Spokane, Nervous Rat says, it's barely light. I've been so busy with work. Thank you, Tom. When the tide is up, we see it right below the railroad tracks. I think Deb said it's about a six to eight foot drop from the tracks down to the beach there and one of the prior scopes we did here. But all that rockery there, that would be underwater at high tide. And let's look. Hey, I think we have a, what's kind of an unfamiliar site, actual merchandise being pulled along. <laughs> I can't say they're cargo tankers, but we got a tug out there shipping, hauling something. I say that kind of tongue in cheek and I'm not trying to really make light of it. Speaking of light, let's check out the sunset. That's what's in the title. But uh, those cargo ships are few in number, as I, as I understand it, given the economic impact of the quarantine situation in China, uh, COVID-19 situation. Really, what I should say is SARS coronavirus 2, because that is indeed the virus that cause, causes the disease, which is now being called COVID-19. Yeah, we have the blossoms. And we were, last time I was out here was probably about pushing a month ago. And those of you who watched that night may recall that we watched a seagull, not a seagull, a bald eagle <laughs> scavenger nonetheless, really. Um, we watched an eagle out there kind of touch the water, come up empty taloned, and then fly right toward us, right toward us, and then off and perched in a tree just over here. So that was really, really nice. Before we get all the leaves on the trees, we can still look, look beyond these trees and through them. Although they've done a lot of clearing here in recent years. We looked along the bluff here. You can see <clears throat> normally there were, years past there were a lot of trees that stood there. Maybe it was a sea hawk. <laughs> oh, Tom. Tom being a New England Patriots fan. Where's uh, Brady going to play, Tom? Where's Brady going to play? Indianapolis? Back to New England? San Diego? You tell me. I can't say San Diego anymore. What am I saying? In the meantime, let's go look at the tug over here once again. 41 degrees when I began the scope about five minutes ago. Sunset here in Muckleteo, Washington, 6.02 p.m. <clears throat> Which means next week, beyond Sunday of next week. So a week from this coming, what, this coming Sunday. So this weekend, daylight saving time. So after that. Sunsets will immediately be during the 7 o'clock hour, and we welcome that. It gets dark early this time of year, or in the wintertime, I should say. Um, but the trade-off is we get to the summers, and we have some light in that direction in June and July, right up against the 10 o'clock hour. 
Hopefully New England, Tom says. Well, this will be a nice shot. Once, if the light keeps on intensifying to the left, imagine that scene. That might make a nice screenshot once we get all that action going, if these colors intensify. And we can find a gap in the trees here. Hey, there's a sign at the bottom of the cherry tree here. Let's see what it says. If love could have saved you, you would have lived forever. I should point out we are at a cemetery. Pioneer Cemetery. But yeah, once the... Thanks, Karen America. Once we get the tug over in this direction, that'll be a really nice shot with what's going on in the sky here. What a nice place to watch a sunset. It's five stars. Imagine being on the bench here. That explains the groomed lawn. See the tug out there? No, it does not. Mona Dawson, welcome to your first day on Periscope. Pretty nice shot, huh? Sunset on a bluff at a Pioneer Cemetery, historic cemetery slash park overlooking Puget Sound. Pink on the blossoms and a slight bit of pinkish red on the water at sunset. How beautiful is that? There's a nice screenshot. Thank you, Real Jackson. How beautiful is that? You can see the blurred image of the tug out there. And if we just push in right to the side, there you go. Is that right, Tom? All right, we're going to frame this up a couple of ways because we got some really, really nice color developing out here in, in the clouds. So that's deepening and reddening. I really love that. I thought maybe what we do 
is let's frame it using the, the fence that just goes right along the edge of this bluff, right? So we've got this fence, which on the other side, it's straight down practically to the railroad tracks and the water. But let's frame something up nice here that might make a really nice screenshot. Look at the water. It's, it's just reflecting some really nice color. Hang on. Let's see if we can get this all situated. This could be really nice. I'm going to lay on my, my stomach here. Hello. I think... Well, that's kind of interesting. You got to try things, right? Let's now move in closer. Because we've got such a nice sky. Okay, look at that. <clears throat> Let's even zoom in some more for a moment and see what that looks like. Look at that deep burgundy on the water. Just beautiful to the left. We do need a train, Tom. I'm going to zoom out because the sky just above the top of the frame here is really nice. Let's see if we can capture some of that, that red on the clouds. Just a moment. There we go. What do you guys think? And while we look at that, off to my right, the ferry is leaving Mukilteo, so let's get a shot of that. Thanks, Karen America. Look how beautiful that is, huh? Oh, you're fine, yeah. but it's the sunset right now. It's the tug pulls a couple of loads there. That is really beautiful. If you're not from the area, have you missed it at the, uh, oh wait, what do we have here? Is that a great blue heron? Yes, it is. I believe we've got a great blue heron down below. That's just out of picture now. Love the great blue herons. Okay, let's push in again. I was about to say, if you missed it at the top of the broadcast, that's Whidbey Island out there, W-H-I-D-B-E-Y. Chris, welcome, Chris Spind or Spind? I'm gonna guess it's Spind. And the southern tip of that 50 plus mile long island is just out there. Just one of so many islands in Puget Sound. That's all salt water. If you're not familiar with the area, that's all salt water. Nice to have you here, Chris. And we're still catching some color. Hang on. Let's see if we can get that exposure to come down a bit there so we can bring in that color. Yes, we can used to be with the Periscope app, you could just touch your screen, at least on the iPhone, and wherever you touched it would expose for that area, the, the brightness, but it doesn't work that way for me anymore, anyway. Mexico, hola, como estas? Nice to have you here from Mexico. Love, dude, where's my car? <laughs> okay, look at that deep red hidden beyond the, within those clouds, right off there. I don't know if it translates very well here, but... Man, to the naked eye, there's some really nice red in this gap. Where's my finger here? Right in there. I wish it would translate a little bit better to the, the phone here, but it's there. And Janine is here from Vancouver Island, where many uh, mainlanders from Burnaby traveled out to Vancouver Island to hit up the Costco and grab all the toilet paper. Is that right, Janine? <laughs> Some dropping as much as $10,000 per person on toilet paper and other 
so-called essentials, all part of the COVID-19 story that's wrapped around Pacific Northwest now, certainly Washington State. We had such beautiful light on the cherry blossoms when we started. You've been out of masks for a month. Yeah, we looked at it about a month ago and we found some. Hey guys, we've got a train, we've got a train. It's not a loud one, so I don't think it's gonna be a Burlington Northern, but okay, let's go from our cargo ship, or our, not our cargo, our tugboat situation, down to the rails here and watch what passes. I think it's gonna be a sounder train. Yep. Right on, Tom. Thank you. In the spirit of Kit Harvey, he's got the uh, train emojis. Kit, who's usually a regular who watches from Redding, California. Not with us at the moment, but she always likes those trains. How do I like the sounder? I've never taken the sounder. Anybody watching ever take the sounder before? No, it's not my backyard. I'm at a cemetery, Pioneer Cemetery. So that's the ferry that's arriving from Whidbey Island. And the ferry that we watched leave a moment ago is headed toward Whidbey Island. It's almost there. You can see it uh, headed towards the island right there. Yeah, this is a real popular historic, they call it Pioneer Cemetery. That is the name. Great place to watch sunsets. The cherry trees, you can watch bald eagles, blue herons. And they don't put bodies in the ground here anymore, folks. That's been a long time ago. In fact, back in the, as recently as the 1960s, this was all overgrown with brush and hard to find a marker for a single grave. But uh, I think it was in the early 70s, I believe, that the then mayor and other volunteers uh, did a lot of work to restore this site. And now it's, it's just beautiful. It is. So people come here and they well, do their photography or just sit and look over at this tremendous view. And those who live in the area, I'm sure Deb and others have all been out here. It's a real nice place, especially if you like elbow room. What do I mean elbow room? Well, oftentimes you're the, uh, the only one here. So if you like to just be kind of left alone and have a high vantage point above the water, that's a sharp contrast to what often happens, especially during the warmer time of year, down there. Because down there, where the ferry's coming in right now, that's the primary target area for people who come down the Mukilteo if they want to see the water. And if we zoom in, we could probably see some people out there. Yes, we can. Not a whole bunch this evening. Again, it's not the warm time of year. It's a nice rail ride from Mount Vernon to Everett. Good to know, Tom. Yeah, there are bald eagles out here. Uh, we're not seeing them at the moment, but the last time I scoped here, it's probably been about a month, we were watching a bald eagle. <clears throat> I've been here many times seeing bald eagles. But we were watching one, let me show you, just out there in the distance and it touched the water as if trying to, as if going for a fish or something, but came up empty talent and it flew right toward us. And then just before it got to us, it went this way off to our left and it perched in a tree a bit further down the shoreline there. And we watched that all unfold live. So it was wonderful. Here's a plane aimed at Payne Field in Everett. I think we'll probably see it here too. No, I think it's gonna to be too low perhaps. Hang on, let's give it a shot. Let's see if it comes into our field of view. There it is. Just about to touch down at the nearby Payne Field Airport in nearby Everett, Washington, where my dad worked for some 30 odd years. The better part of 30 years, I should say. He started in Renton with Boeing. I've got a brother who works there now at Painfield. 
And way out there now, toward the southern end of Whidbey Island, we can see that tug pulling what I guess are a couple of barges. Would that be right? It's got three new messages. Let's see. Years ago, you took the train up to Canada, Kelly says. Talked about the Eagles, 787-893. Welcome to your first day on Periscope. I've not flown out of Painfield, Tom, have you? They, they, it was a year ago, basically. I think we just passed within the last week the one-year mark of flights out of Painfield, commercial airline flights. Uh, amazing, Kelly says. Friday Harbor is cool, too, Cosmic Wizard 40 says. Beautiful view, STP 5150. Tom has not. He wants to. Anyways, the evening sky now in twilight has surrendered the the burgundy, burgundy and rose colors that we saw out there and upon the water several minutes ago. But we still have enough light that we can get a decent picture on the phone and see it all reflect upon the water. So what I like to do oftentimes too, we'll see some sea lions patrolling the shoreline. Let's just, a good spot to see that is out this way. I'm not going to say we're going to see that right now, but I always like to check. Can't rule it out. Let's see what's out there. It's definitely a low tide right now, that's for sure. You can just mark out where, how high the tide comes up. If you look at this um, darker uh, beach here, that would all be underwater at high tide. And where it lightens up, just here and around the bend, that would be high tide. A normal high tide, anyway. Go to Clinton and tell my brother to pay me the money he owes me. <laughs> <laughs> so for the folks who are not familiar with the area, where we watch the ferry leave here of Mukilteo and go across the way, in fact, I can see it way out there in the distance. It's just docked. I'll put it in the center of the screen. That is Clinton. That's what, um, that's the location Cosmic Wizard 40 is referring to. That's where the ferry docks on the side of, uh, and south end of Woodby Island, Clinton. So I'll tell you what, Cosmic Tom, Woodby Tom, Woodby Tom is out there on Whidbey Island. Maybe we can have him hit, hit your brother up. <laughs> huh. bird, sounds out, bird sounds out there that you recognize. Um, got a lot of seagulls, and I, I don't think I've heard a blue heron yet, but they oftentimes come in off the water in the, the area. Just the, There's a nest very near here, so it's not uncommon at twilight, especially as the weather warms up and they're nesting, roosting to hear them come in around this time. You've been on that ferry many times, Cosmic says. Not until I get my money from my brother in California. <laughs> so the, what's the moral of the story? Don't loan money to your brother? <laughs> Let's back it up and bingo. <laughs> okay. Let's back it up and try a couple different shots here. And Cosmic is right there, right on cue. There's the bench. Do you see it out there now? That's one of the benches. Kind of nice just to stand back and give you a different perspective. This will definitely be a different perspective. Just a moment. Can you make out the gravestones? Right on, Tom. There's a historic lighthouse that's down at the beach off to our right down below where we've also done scopes in the past. Yeah, they do have some neat gravestones here.
including Japanese. All right, Karen, take care. Yes, I am. We began the very first frame of video in this scope this evening was well lit. <laughs> Cherry blossoms, not so well lit anymore, but listen to the sounds out there. Oh, I just heard a bird. It seemed to be in pain and agony, but I'm sure it was a natural, comfortable call. <laughs> I don't think it was a heron. Don't you just love the sounds? Yeah, we're right on the edge of it, right on the edge of Puget Sound, on the bluff. I still have some nice light on the water. I'm right on cue, I can hear the water making a bit of noise. I'm wondering if it's, it's either awake from a boat, which I don't think it is, or perhaps it's turnaround time for the high, for the tide. Maybe it's all the way out. The moon's going to send it back this way. We'll see. No wind. What to speak of? The water had been so quiet and still. It was very apparent right from the get-go that the water was very, very calm. I'm thinking of my friend Kristen Sasse right now, who's up in... Alaska, at Dutch Harbor, way out on the Aleutian Island chain. You know, on my phone, I have like location services where I can see where some of my friends and family are located. And my friend Christian Sasse in Alaska is further away than my friend Tom Joel's in Wisconsin. And because <laughs> when you get out to Dutch Harbor on the Aleutian Island chain, you know, you're out there halfway across the Pacific on the edge of the Bering Sea. You're on Anchorage time, which means the time is only one hour behind Seattle, yet he is further west, further away from us than Hawaii, if you just go west. So it's just amazing. And he's been dealing with some extreme cold out there. Not surprising for this time of year, but getting some great shots. Check him out on Instagram, at Sassy Photo, S-A-S-S-E-P-H-O-T-O. He's up there right now with his nearby neighbor. <laughs> lives on lives in Canada as well, right against the Washington border. Eagle biologist David Hancock. And they're due to come back on Sunday, but the weather has been an issue. It delayed their flight too, from Anchorage to Dutch Harbor. And it could be an issue coming back. We'll see. So someone asked about the wind, the flag. Nary a wave, if you will. And with that, my friends, I think I'm going to wrap it up. I want to thank you all very much for checking out this scope. If you missed the beginning, please maybe check out the beginning of the scope. Go back and watch the replay because we had some really nice light, beautiful cherry blossoms, well lit. And we had a tugboat go by hauling a couple of barges against a beautiful rose-colored sky. And much of the uh, sky and some of that light upon the water as well. You're welcome, Tom. Take care. Thank you so much. Sorry I've been away. I've just been so busy with work and everything. And you know what? It's good to be able to get outside and have a lot of elbow room while we can, right? While we still can. Because I would not be surprised if we're going to be encouraged to quarantine or self-quarantine soon, at least here in Snohomish County. All right, my friends. 
Thank you so much. I appreciate you watching. Hope to see you again soon. Good night or good day, wherever you might be.